All right, so at the end of the last class, uh, we sort of we were talking about uh, the fault resolution stuff and uh, the transformation from the geographic coordinate system down in, into the fault in terms of the stresses. And then with that, we can determine if a fault is slip or not. And so I went rather quickly, it was right at the end of the class, and I sort of said, well, you know, here, here are these pro problems, and, and um, you know, if you want to get started on your homework, then, you know, here's the solutions. Of course, then I didn't post the homework until today. So you probably haven't looked at this. So let's go ahead and look at one of these um, in terms of, you know, so here I've already g I've given you the stress in the geographic coordinate system, right? So normally, again, just remember, we measure the stress in terms of the principal stresses and directions, you know, from wellbore observations and other things. We measure them, they could be arbitrarily oriented. We then transfer those into the geographic coordinate system. And then from the geographic coordinate system down into the plane of the fault, okay? And so here, we've skipped the first step, right? And so this is not the principal stresses, this is the stress in the geographic coordinate system, and there's the strike and the dip, and I just gave you the, I just gave them to you, uh, but normally, you know, I'd, I'd probably give you more of a, a problem statement in this case, and so let's, let's sort of draw this scenario and see what, what it is, you know, draw this fault. And so, if the strike is at 60 degrees, and this is north, right, so that, that means that this angle is 60 degrees, okay? And the dip, in this case, is 90, which means it's a perfectly, it's a perfectly vertical fault, right? So, so if this was horizontal, this angle is 90 degrees, yeah? So, so we have those equations, again, that come, you know, it's just geometry. It's the projection from the geometric coordinate system down onto the plane of the fault in terms of the normal vectors to the plane, right? So. Uh, you know, the equations were on the, on the previous slides. I just coded them up here, and this is like the simplest code ever, right? Because I'm just literally almost copying and pasting the formulas <coughs> from uh, what was on the slide to, to here, okay? So this is just a function. My, I call the function compute unit vectors. I would advise you to write a function like this for your homework and for your test. So so I have a function, compute unit vectors, and it's just going to return n, which is the normal to the plane, n s, which is normal in the shear direction, or the unit vector in the shear direction, uh, and n d, which is the unit vector in the direction of the dip. Okay? n s is in the direction of the strike. Okay? Uh, it takes, the function takes the argument strike and dip, Notice that I just, that, you know, uh, MATLAB has these predefined functions sine d and cosine d, so that they take it, normally the default for sine and cosine would be, um, you know, to put in radians as arguments. But here you, with these d functions, you can just put in degrees, uh, which is more typical of how the problem statement's going to read. So then you have this, okay? So, um, so my my uh, my function compute unit vectors takes uh, as an argument the strike and the dip in this case 60 and 90 right so 60 90 and um, Of course, the default in MATLAB is it'll, it'll only return the first argument. This function returns three things, right? N, N, S, N, D, right? And so in that case, there's the, the three answers. So 
N, N S, N D. If you go back over here, I've provided you the solutions so you can test your code, and those are identical. And so then, you know, what, we're, what we really want to know, right, the fault is going to slip if the ratio of the normal stress to the shear stress exceeds some critical value, right? We talked about that. It has to do with friction. Right? And we're going to talk more about it in just a minute. But, but, you know, remember my analogy with the paper last time, right? So, uh, so really what we want to know, what the, what the resolved normal and the resolved shear stresses are, okay? So anybody remember the formula for for the normal, right? So remember in here, that's a normal, that's a unit vector. That's a, that's a unit vector in the normal direction. What's the actual normal stress on the plane? Remember, if we have a plane and it has some arbitrary traction, arbitrary traction vector, and there's a normal vector, right? We have a formula for this traction vector, right? What's the, what's the formula for the traction vector? Remember, it was sort of how we defined stress, right? It's the stress times n, right? And then if we want to know so that, that gives us this traction vector, right? And then if we want to know what the component of that is in the normal, we just take the dot product, right? Take the dot product of that vector with that one, that gives us the projection in the normal. Right? So the stress in the normal is equal to, I'm going to use SG in in. Right. So SG is the stress, right? So here I'm saying the stress in the, in the geographic coordinate system dotted in the N, dotted in the N again. Right. That gives me the stress in the normal. Right. So um, SG was given in the problem statement. It's uh, 30, 8.66, minus 8.66, 40, mm -hmm. and so then the stress in the normal is equal to SG times N, and it just, I mean, I'll show you, this is not, I should have another times N, of course, but MATLAB is going to complain because, well, because this, the result of this in the MATLAB is, a, like, this is, a, this is a matrix, that's a column vector, and then the, the result of that uh, is a is a column vector, but then to take the dot product to take the dot product again, I can't take the dot product of a column vector with a column vector. I, it needs to be a row vector with a column vector, right? So, so I just need to add a transpose right there. So I'm just going to transpose the result, and then I get the result is 40, right? 40. So that's the normal. The, the shear directions then, um, you know, it's the same formula. It's just now instead of N, I'm going to have NS and ND, right? So to get the two shear components. So I'm going to say the stress in the, in the direction of the strike is NS, and the stress in the direction of the dip is N times ND is zero. Okay, what does that mean? The stress in the direction of the dip is zero. What does that imply? Striking only, right? So it's a pure strike slip. 
Okay. So, again, we mentioned last time that the, it's the you know the the, the the ratio of the normal to the resolved shear stress. That sh resolved shear stress could have two components. In this case, it only has one. Right. So here it's just the ratio, essentially 40 to 8.66, to determine if it's going to slip or not. All right. If you if you did want to know the the you know the the total shear stress, say tau, of course that would be uh, the square root of SS squared plus SD squared. Right. Squared. Right. Which in this case is just 8.66. And so there's there's the results. All right. So again, my advice to you on the homework, and then certainly on the test, is you know you should write a. Co I give you a way to test your code. Write a code, test it against these answers. If it works, you absolutely will get the right answer, right? If you can solve these problems, if you get the right resolved shear stresses, you will absolutely get the wrong, right answer in terms of the computation, right? So there's four tests, right? I gave you four tests to test your code. And that should help you do the homework. And then you can use, then you have confidence, right, that your code also will work on your exam. So what I will not do, I mean, for, for in terms of the exam, I'm not going, while I'll, while I'll give you the answers to the second homework, I'm not going to post the code. Right? I'm not going to write the code for you. I mean, that, that, then you're not doing anything. Right? I'm not going to write the code for you. Right? So you're, you're, I'll give you the answers. You have the ability to check and see if your code works. And when I say code, I mean, this is not really a code. It's like three lines of MATLAB, right? It's not, it's not a proper code. Maybe script would be the correct, answer, the correct word. So I'm giving you plenty of opportunity to make sure you, you can get the right answer. Okay.